at you, right? Yeah, I look, look at her. Right okay. Yep, I'm <laughs> okay, so please start by stating and spelling your name for us. Okay, my name is David McFarlane, D-A-V-I-D-M-A-C-F-A-R-L-A-N-E. And your title? I'm a professor of forest measurements and modeling. Within the Department of Forest? Oh, yeah. Okay. Let me start again. I'm a professor of forest measurements and modeling at uh -huh. Michigan State University. I'm also the director of undergraduate studies for our forestry program. Uh -huh. And I also serve as a liaison between MSU Forestry and MSU Land Management Office related to forested properties management. Okay. And can you tell us a little bit about uh, the research you have um, taking place here at McCready? Uh, okay, um, so which project should I start with? Um, well, this one here we want to talk about the, the biomass, biomass okay. right? So yeah, so um, it's not exclusive to the McCready Reserve. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'm working on a national uh, forest biomass project. Mm -hmm. So the U.S. Forest Service uh, maintains uh, a system of plots, a national grid of forest inventory plots, mm -hmm. and they use those plots to assess uh, the state of the nation's forests, and then they remeasure them periodically uh, to determine um, changes in mm -hmm. forest condition over time. And uh, traditionally, forest inventories and the national forest inventory was an inventory of uh, the wood products in the forest. So how much um, wood could be extracted, what is the nation's timber stocks, if you will. Mm -hmm. But uh, through the environmental movement and into the modern age, uh, it's really becoming more of a forest ecosystems inventory. So they've added a lot of variables and things to measure that tell us more about things like forest health. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's even ozone plots on it, looking at uh, dead trees, which we didn't used to look at. And also trying to measure the whole tree, not just the woody part of the tree. And so the currency that a lot of scientists use for measuring biological organisms and ecosystems is mass. Mm -hmm. So we can say, you know, how much does how much mass is in a tree. And then uh, through chemistry, we can figure out how much, and experiments, we can figure out how much of that mass is, say, carbon dioxide, how much of it is water. So what we're trying to figure out is how much uh, carbon from the atmosphere do trees store, how much water is stored in trees, what, how, how to chemical cycle through the ecosystem from the trees to the atmosphere to the water to the soil and back again. And in order to do that, we need to take we need to measure tree components in terms of mass. Mm -hmm. So mass is weight, and the only way to actually weigh something is to put it on a scale. Mm -hmm. The only way to weigh a tree is to cut the tree down and either have a giant crane scale that could lift the whole tree up, or to cut the tree up into pieces and weigh all those parts, especially if you want to separate the components of mass. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, know how much is in the trunk of the tree, how much is in branches, how much of the mass is in leaves. And that's, uh, these types of tree models is something I've been working on for years. Mm -hmm. And so I was invited in, in a national project uh, that's a multi-university collaboration mm -hmm. with the U.S. Forest Service to develop national tree mass equations um, for the whole country. Mm -hmm. And that these equations, when they're developed, can be applied to the national forest inventory plots to then be able to accurately estimate uh, mass components of trees and how those change over time under different influences. And do you have, um, are, are there particular species you're looking at? Um, so there's, a, so yeah, there are, you know, there are many, many species mm -hmm. of trees. Um, so the, for the project, what we did is we took the national, current national forest inventory data and we looked at what were the most abundant trees across the whole country. And so we're focusing uh, near the top of that list. However, there's a, when you do science, there's always some questions you want to answer. So in the case of uh, my part of the research plan, we all have a common research plan, all the partners. Um, and my part is representing the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes. So there are actually five other universities involved. And so we're all collecting data from our region and then feeding that up into the national database. So I also developed a... Um, I'm also picked some species that are less common, but have some uh, interest to them. Uh, they're species which I think will, will be different than other species. Because ideally, you know, you, you would have, if, if trees were all the same, you could have one equation that fits all. Mm -hmm. So what we look for is, is ways we can, we can group 
uh, similar species together. So part of the uh, way, thing to understand is how different are trees from each other. In other words, if you have a tree that has the same measurements we take, but it's a different species, does it weigh more just because there's something genetic about it or the way that it grows that causes its wood to be more or less dense, mm -hmm. which would make it um, heavier or lighter? Mm -hmm. um, trees are under both environmental influences, which affect how they grow and how much mass they gain. Mm -hmm. And so we're also looking uh, across multiple different locations and across the country to look at geographic variation. How does climate, how do soils, how does um, the growing conditions affect the mass of the tree and how the tree spreads mass throughout it. So if you think of the basic architecture of trees, you know, we have what we call hardwood trees. Hardwood trees spread their branches wide, whereas a lot of softwoods or conifers tend to come to a point at the top. Well, that differences in the basic branching architecture obviously affect like what proportion of the mass of the tree is in the branches versus the main stem or whether it's even clear that you can define a main stem of a tree, if you look at a tree. So we've picked both conifers and hardwoods. We've picked species that we know have lighter woods, species that we know have heavier woods, species that are more tolerant of shade versus species which like to grow in, in open sunlight. And so we're uh, gonna be comparing all these different variables to try to understand uh, from a basic science perspective, what are the things that affect tree mass. Mm -hmm. And your, the long-term goal then, um, uh, let's say for someone who's listening to uh, this video, why should they be interested in this type of research? What, what, how might it impact them in future generations? Well, so uh, by, understand, by being able to quantify in, on a mass basis the components of forests mm -hmm. here um, in Michigan, the whole country across the world, then we can understand better how forests are interacting with the rest of the Earth's ecosystems. How, is, how does material move from the soil, from the air, from water to assemble a tree? How does that change over time? So it's, it's really a question about ecosystem, bio, biology, ecosystem, um, chemistry, and how does that all uh, come together? If trees die or get sick, you know, do they lose some of their mass? One of the one of the great impetuses for this has been the um, has been the connection to climate change because uh, trees absorb CO2 from the atmosphere. And basically, if you think of what a tree is, it's basically water and air. Uh, it's amazing to look at a big tree and think it's mostly water and air, and some energy from the sun that's bound that water and air together with some minerals from the soil. That's why if you take a tree and you cut it up and you burn it, you basically get steam and smoke and just a little pile of ash that's left behind from, from an enormous tree. So it's tied into the whole chemistry of the Earth's atmosphere. And so that's been a driving force. You know, the, the data um, that we, that the, from the National Forest Inventory will be able to estimate what's, uh, the U, what's the contribution of U.S. forests to um, absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. How do the forests uh, both affect the climate and how are they affected by the climate? How do they mitigate, um, you know, things like, um, like watersheds? Mm -hmm. so, there, so there's a lot of connections, but, but the, the way we've traditionally approached forests and forest management has been how much wood is in the forest? Mm -hmm. How can we get wood out of the forest? And so, you know, for us to understand in more of a um, fundamental biological sense, we need to have these, these types of equations and this type of data. Okay. And any idea when the equations, I mean, are, are how long it will be before the equations are uh, well, arrived? Well, it, this is one of those, you know, I was talking about carbon sequestration, but a lot of it has to do with long-term commitment mm -hmm. um, by, the, by the federal government to this project. You know, a lot of times projects are funded for short periods of time. So we started with the most common and abundant species because they're the species that you tend to find all over. And then it would probably take a decade for us to get all the way down to some of the obscure and more rare uh, species mm -hmm. to develop a full set of equations. Mm -hmm. The target is 156 species. Yeah. And we've 
done maybe, um, uh, in two years we've done maybe 15 to 20 or something. So, you know, it's going to take some time. Although the initial part of the study was to develop the protocols. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you actually um, t take a tree down? I guess I should talk about the methodology. So the, so the method works like this. You have, you have plots, right, up, or an area. So you want to know how much all the trees or an individual tree in an area, how massive is that tree? And how much of the mass of that tree is in the branches, is in the leaves, is in the trunk? So how do you do that? Well, the only way, again, to know how much tree weighs is to cut it down. We don't want to cut the forest down to know how much it weighs. So the way this works is we will cut down sample trees of different sizes and species all around, and then we're going to cut them up into sections and sort all the parts, and we weigh them green in the field. And then with those green weights, we're going to take a sample of each of those. The green weight is the weight with water. So there's the mass of the tree, but trees also store water. About half of a tree is water, actually. So if you take part of that tree and you put it in the, uh, you weigh it on a scale, and then you cook it in the oven until you, at about 105 degrees Celsius, you push all the water out of it, so it's bone dry, oven dry. Then we weigh it again. Now we've got the dry mass of it. Now we know the dry to green mass ratio of all these different pieces, and then we can multiply those ratios back times the known total green mass of the tree from weighing it in the forest and get the total mass of all the components. And then what we do is once we've got a tree cut down, disassembled, weighed, oven dried, then we bring all that data back into a database, reconstruct the tree, and figure out what all these mass components are. The other thing we do is we take dimensional measurements of the tree. And from previous research, it's been shown that certain dimensional measurements are correlated with how much a tree weighs. For example, the girth of a tree. If you go and wrap your arms around a tree, and you think it's circumference, the bigger it is around, the more massive that tree is likely to be. So that's a very strong predictor variable. We've also been looking at things like, OK, how do we predict what proportion of, of the mass is in the branches versus the main stem? Well, I've with some of the research I've done, I've shown that if you can measure something like the size of the largest branch in the tree relative to the size of the trunk, that tells you something about what proportion of the total mass of the tree is in the branches versus in the trunk. And so I'll give you an example of, you know, I thought of that model before it was actually possible to measure a branch. And then uh, a few years ago, uh, Hagloff of Sweden invented this laser caliper so, you know, the science of forest measurement has not only changed thematically from a timber inventory to a whole ecosystem inventory, but forestry has been able to take advantage of all the advances in science, like GPS technology, and in particular, laser technology. We can use lasers like such as this laser caliper. I don't even have to touch the tree anymore. I can measure its girth by just projecting these two lasers from the arms of the caliper. Okay, and a smaller tree, I'd move in. Or I can go up into the tree, all the way up, and I can find a branch I want to measure. And now I can measure something like how big is the largest branch in the tree. Did you get that? Yeah. So, so with so with protocol, armed with protocols of how to measure properly measure the tree do all the steps I described, cut up all the pieces, sort them, weigh them, reconstruct the tree. Then we take that data and all of these different measurements of the tree, and we try to isolate which are the key measurements that you would take on a standing tree to feed into the mathematical equation that then predicts the mass of the tree. So after we collect the data, then I'll take the data and my colleagues, we're going to build mathematical models which will process the data and then it will uh, evaluate um, how, which variables are the, the most effective at estimating how massive a tree is and its components. And then on top of that, we've also been looking at things like cost efficiency. So, and how much training does it take for a person to be able to take the measurements? So it, we want to keep the measurements as simple 
as possible. So an efficient system would be if we could just go up and take one cheap measurement of a tree or of a set of trees in a group and then feed that into an equation and get an accurate estimate of math. Um, it's a bit more complicated than that, but we're learning a lot about it and the science of you know, tree mass estimation and standing tree mass estimation is improving uh, as part of this project.